A reading from the Gospel of John. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, and they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was also greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. There is such power in this story, and I even can feel it as I read the story um, from John's Gospel, how true to human experience this is, how many times we ourselves have been at the deathbed of a family member or in the aftermath of a loved one's death, and there's much running through us, deep gratitude for God and where God showed up in the midst of this Um, through people in our final words and moments with our person that we love, but also at the same time as we hear expressed by both of Lazarus's sisters, if you'd really been here, he would not have died. I know that you have the ability because we've seen your miraculous works. I know that you could have brought a different outcome. And what's there for us sometimes is, and why didn't you? When I was in my hospital chaplaincy, I went into it, um, the chaplaincy for three months that you do between your first and second year in seminary. I had personally experienced two um, really striking, miraculous recoveries as described by the medical people around. Um, And I went into this hospital knowing that most people who experience a severe crisis in their health um, are in fact going to die. And I found myself struggling with how it is, why it is that God, uh, as the sisters say, if you choose, you can do anything. Why does God choose seemingly to intervene in ways here, but not there? Why does God allow um, the pain that we experience in the separation of death? All of those of the deepest questions of our faith 
come to the fore around something like this, the death of a loved one, the death of a family member. And so in this story where I feel so deeply all of those currents that happen in our day-to-day -day life as we face the end of life for our loved ones or even for people as they're facing their own death, this mystery that somehow in it, it is both heartbreaking and soul crushing. And also it's where the glory of God breaks through and that the experiences um, that we've had companioning people in their final moments, uh, most of us have seen astonishing things that suggest the, the, the end of this bodily life is not the end. We see people interacting with folks in, in a realm beyond where we are. Um, again, an ordinary hospital bed um, in, in our modern day. And so this, this border between life and death is so rich with meaning. It's so, so rich with pain. It's so rich with love. And it's absolutely bursting with the glory of God. And we see that all in this story of Lazarus's death and his um, resuscitation, resurrection, but he, of course, he will die again. Um, so he continues on in his earthly life, having been brought back to life by Jesus. And this, of course, this astonishing act really is what seals Jesus' fate in the account in John's gospel. It's from this point on that the religious leaders um, are really quite convinced that Jesus must go. And it's what eventually leads Jesus to his own encounter with bodily death and, of course, his own encounter with um, life not being defeated by death, with life and eternal life um, glimmering through. But that's leaving a bit ahead. That's Easter. We've got another week or so until we get into that. So just to rest in this moment with this mystery of the, the space between this life and the next around death and how it brings up the best and the most devastating of our our human interactions and, and experiences. But most of all, it brings forth a, a very direct sense of God's presence with us in it all. As this um, continues with you, this, this Lenten um, journey, we're coming towards the end. I hope that you find some richness um, in your life, a place to reflect on what the richness of this mystery means in your life and how that can draw you closer to God as you continue to live your life day to day, um, removing anything that keeps you from the love of God and drawing closer and closer to that eternal and radiant and um, everlasting light. May God be with you this day. May God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.